I thank you all for gathering to offer thanks and praise to God. And as you know, 14th Feb is Valentine's Day. We also pray for the blessings of the Valentine to rest upon each one of you of us and allow us to become true channels of love to our brothers and sisters as it is requested of us in today's readings. We have heard of the life of a leper in the first, and the first reading and the Gospel. We can say in all it was a tough life. And Leviticus has given laws to be followed to discern as to whether a person was a leper and what would follow immediately. Leprosy was seen as a terrible disease, I think even up to today. And the book of Job says leprosy is the firstborn of death. To go through this situation was very horrible, very frightening. The community, as we have heard being instructed, is advised that if someone showed signs of leprosy, had to go to a priest to be examined. And once proved so, he would be sent out of the community. The community or the camp would no longer have a place for him. And the priests, unfortunately, were the people in charge of the throwaway ministry. They sent those poor human beings almost to the dumpster. So they were in charge of the dumping ministry. And when one went there, he became a member of the minority. And this minority that had no place in the bigger community had to keep away to stay in caves or in forested areas where in a way that would make people identify that individual easily without any mistake, would keep the hair unkempt, and on top of that, would go around saying, I'm unclean, unclean, in a scaring voice, so that people run away. So they made sure that this person remained on the edges, no place for him. This humiliation, rejection, isolation, seclusion, and loneliness made the sickness worse. So when this young, this man approaches Jesus, you know what condition this man is. He's a person upon being seen, already one who gets a message of fright. Jesus does the opposite. He stays there, he does not run away. He welcomes him. And when he stands there for him, he also touches him. And his touch has several meanings. Jesus, by his touch, is reconnecting with God's image in that person that was being distorted by the leprosy, the image that had been kicked out of the community 
an image that was declared without any place in the cup. His touch is meant to identify with this man's situation. Jesus is not indifferent. His touch is meant to cut through the stigma of rejection, isolation, and distancing. Jesus' touch is meant to say, I am with you as a savior and healer. Jesus touches him to prove to him that you have space in my heart, although society has no space for you. And Jesus touches him to lead him in a new direction, from the caves and the forests to the direction of the temple, where he was prohibited to go. And now after healing him, he says, go to the priests and be proof to them. He's giving him a new direction of life. His touch is also meant to say, you are worth who you are. Your dignity is upheld by me who touches you. And his touch is a sign of special concern, divine concern, divine descending on this rejected person. So the action of Jesus in today's Gospel is an invitation to all church members, disciples of the Lord, to learn after him, to respect the rejected persons, the minorities, to encounter them without resentment, but with compassion, to be for them servants of mercy, to keep no distance from them, to bring love to their situations, to listen to their story. Jesus listened. If you wish, you can make me clear. And to be hospitable. All these lessons are learned from our Lord's action. So we cannot turn a blind eye to those who are marginalized, pushed the edges, who have been declared to have no place in the community, the minorities. Jesus would like us to respond most positively. And if we do this, we shall be the sign for the world that something great is happening in our midst. The love of the great prophet is made alive in you. That the day of liberation is at hand as God liberates his people through you. That God is visiting his people, especially the minorities. And that God's kingdom is here. Let us make it present. present let us testify to this kingdom. And there are many instances in life where this can be made understood. Therefore, on this Sunday, let us pray that every one of us, because they per se, can also stand for the conditions of sin that we stay in that are very oppressive spiritually. Let's take the courage to reach out to Jesus in prayer, as this letter did. Let the community learn the art of compassion toward the minorities. Let us learn to incorporate all people, to find a place for them in our communities and not kick them out when they are already in problems, making their situations worse. Let's also learn to accept the sick, especially the healthy, to be more accepting to those who are sick. And know how to recover 
and accommodate the gifts those who are brought back to the communities, the gifts they bring, they come with. This man who was healed, after the healing, though he was prohibited, he went out to announce the experience he had gotten with Christ, that healing experience. He became an evangelizer. He had a gift in him that Christ tapped into, which other people could not have seen if Christ had not healed him. So these people we think are on the peripherals, on the margins, have gifts in them. Let us tap into these gifts. Let, take, let us take good news to those who are shunned. And let's be patient with every condition of life. And this patience will teach us to also to learn not to hurt our brothers and sisters as St. Paul has advised us in the second reading. In all we say, let us grow and live to be messengers of change, a change that transforms conditions of our fellow human beings from worst to best. And by that we shall be true servants of mercy as we sang in the opening song. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit.